Greetings, everybody. Today is August 1st, 2020. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, I got called an anti-Semite today for quoting Jesus. Uh, on the King James Bible Online Commentary. Isn't that wonderful? By supposedly a female that uh, thinks that TV preachers are teaching the truth. Boy, I tell you what. I see why the Lord deceives people. Well, this uh, Bible study, I guess, is going to be... Well, today's a fast day for me and for some of you. And um, we're going to study where Jesus did a fast. And uh, I guess you could say this Bible study is going to be on 40. So let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Oh, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 3, and then we're going to go to 4. Now, uh, Matthew 3.13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Suffered means allowed. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Why the wilderness? Well, you go to a city, you bump into people, flashing lights, all kinds of distractions. When you go into the wilderness, what is there? Not much. Especially if you go into the desert. What's in the desert? I tell you what, when you go to the desert at night and you're many, many miles away from civilization, it's amazing how many stars you can see. It's amazing. So you go into the wilderness to be alone with the Lord with no distractions. Verse 2. And when he, Jesus, had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Now, 40 days is, from what I've read in medical literature, is about pretty close to the maximum that a person can live without eating. When you fast, um, it takes approximately, from what I've read, and obviously, I'm not a medical doctor, and I'm not giving medical advice, but uh, from what I've read, people's experiences in medical literature, it takes about three days for the body to convert from, start burning the fat. Now, when, you're, when you eat a chemical that your body doesn't know what to do with, can't digest it or whatever, like man-made substances, if it can't excrete it or it can't digest it, it'll store it in the fat. It puts it away. And some cancer researchers suggest that it's these things that are stored in the fat that cause problems with endocrine problems, hormonal problems, and cancerous problems. 
Uh, women get breast cancer. Breasts are fat. You know, when you tell your wife that she's getting fat, well, you'd think she had, some guys would appreciate it, right? If it's from certain places, right? But that's why women get breast cancer, according to some researchers. Now, when you, on the third day of a fast, a lot of times the hunger will disappear. You're hungry for about three, about three days. Then the body starts burning the fat. Some of us have more of it than others. And um, so then when you start burning the fat, the chemicals that were stored in the fat are being excreted. So some people say that it's, you know, a healthy thing to do. But there's a spiritual application to that, too. The subduing of the flesh and trying to hear the Spirit of the Lord. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. So you can go 40 days without eating, but uh, three days without water is about all a person can do. And if you're in the desert, I doubt if you'll even last three days without water. Probably one day. One day in the heat, you're in big trouble. So, everybody that I've ever read says that when you fast, always drink water. And water flushes your system out for all that garbage that's stored in the fat. So, pure, clean water. Not this fluoride chlorinated garbage that the uh, municipalities pass upon us so all right so jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights oh i left something out all right so after about the third day on or about or after the third day uh your hunger goes away and then depending upon how much fat you have you know could be a few days if you're young and thin it could be a week or two if you're old and fat like me well i'm not real fat but but uh, the thing is when the hunger returns your body has exhausted the fat it's gotten rid of it that is when your body is actually now starting into the phase what is called starvation and your body is going to start eating your muscles. So the thing is, is once you've digested all the fat and the hunger comes back, it's time to break the fast. And if you fasted for two weeks, um, a lot of medical people say that uh, you don't want to go out and eat a, a two pound steak and potato. And no, you don't want to do that because your stomach's been shut down for a couple weeks and uh, some people supposedly have died from doing that so the best thing you can do is you know start off with a like a fruit smoothie or something like that or perhaps a vegetable smoothie you know do that for a day or two and then you know vegetable broth and they say if you fast um, if you've hadn't eaten for a week, that you should take a week before you get back to solid foods. If it's two weeks, you should take two weeks to gradually, gradually adjust your body back to um, solid foods. Now, obviously, I'm not an expert on fasting, um, but there was a Day of Atonement every year. It's around September when the Lord, that was a fasting day a day when we were to afflict our souls, to reflect upon all the sins upon that we have done. So, Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. We're going to, why 40 days and 40 nights? Well, guess what? The word, uh, the number 40 pops up a lot. We're going to get into that. So, verse 3, And when the tempter came to him, Jesus, he said, If thou, if thou be the Son of God, Command these stones be made bread. 
But Jesus, but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth, proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How many people, uh, the Bible says that uh, there are people whose God is their belly. Oh yeah. How many Christians do you know that have actually read the entire Bible from cover to cover? I know very few. Very few. And this is for all the Paul haters out there. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, back to Matthew 3, verse 4. Uh, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone." See, Satan's quoting scripture here. Satan knows scripture better than most Christians. Verse 7, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. You know, my note here, uh, it probably pales horribly in con in comparison to where Jesus came from, which was the kingdom of heaven. Oh yeah, I'm going to trade heaven for a garbage dump. Right. Verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Do you know that even Satan in his evil serves the Lord purpose? in some ways. Oh yeah. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Jesus, that is. All right, so, what is the deal with 40? Well, real simple. Turn to Genesis chapter 7. All right, Genesis 7 and verse uh, 4. The Lord says, For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Remember, Jesus fasted for forty days and forty nights. And we're going to take a look at 40 days and 40 nights. So, I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. Okay, verse 10. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. So, verse 12. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and and 40 nights. Huh. So where else do we hear 40? Exodus chapter 16. Children of Israel have the, the Passover passed. The children of Israel with Moses are out in the desert, right? Exodus chapter 16. Verse 33, And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot, and put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it upon, uh, lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. 
um, in the um, the Ark of the Covenant, they took Aaron's rod that he turned into a serpent before Pharaoh, and they took a little bit of manna, put it in a pot, and put that in the Ark of the Covenant too. And if memory serves me correctly, the Ten Commandments were in there too. So there was manna in the um, uh, the Ark. Verse 34, And as the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. For the children of Israel did eat manna forty years. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. Now, you know, what I find interesting is the land of Canaan, right? Well, remember, Canaan was the son, grandson of uh, Noah that he cursed. And uh, the Canaanites, and people, if you don't know this, write me. I will prove to you that the Canaanites were satanic human hybrids from the fallen angels of Genesis 6 after the flood. I got an entire playlist on it, probably close to 10 hours. The Angels That Sinned, my playlist. I mean, it's it's irrefutable. Unless you go to a demon nominational church where you got a satanic pastor or an ignorant pastor that went to Bible cemetery and doesn't know any better and probably has a pastor as a job, not as a calling. There's a lot of pastors that were never called. Um, I'm not worthy to be called a teacher per Paul. I mean a pastor. I'm not worthy to be called a, a pastor per Paul. I am, I was called as, to be a teacher. So, all right, so they man of 40 years. Now, when they got to the land of Canaan, who was there? The Canaanites. The children of the devils were there to oppose the Lord's children and the Lord's purpose. He wanted to give Israel the land, and Satan's children, basically, were there to oppose them. Think about that. Is there a modern application to that? Hmm. Who's in the land now? People that proclaim the glory of Christ or people that reject the glory of Christ? I'll let you be the judge. All right, let's go to Exodus 24. Uh, Moses goes up in the mount. Exodus chapter 24, verse 16. And the glory of the Lord abode unto Mount Sinai. Now, people, beware. There's people who tell you that the glory of the Lord here is the Shekinah. S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H. Shekinah. The Chu-ish encyclopedia, if you catch my drift, says that the Shekinah is the Queen of Heaven. They want you to think that the Holy Spirit the glory of the Lord is the queen of heaven. Uh, wrong, wrong, wrong. The Holy, the Holy Spirit in the New Testament is called he. Sometime, a couple times it, but he's called e. He, H-E. And it's not sh he It's he. And it's not a she-male. Sorry. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went up into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 
40 days and 40 nights. Huh. Moses was in the Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. Seems like there's a lot of 40s, huh? Uh, let's see. Exodus 34, verse 26. The first of the first uh, first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. Wow. So the Lord supernaturally sustained Moses for 40 days and 40 nights with no water and no food. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of, the, of his face shone while he talked with them. His face shone like a light bulb, I'm sure. Forty days, forty nights. All right, let's go to Numbers 14. Um, now, Numbers 14, verse 31. The Lord's not happy with these people. But your little ones which ye, have, which ye said should be a prey... Them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcass, they shall fall in the wil this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, forty years, and bear you your whoredoms, and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. Numbers 32, 13. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness forty years, forty years, until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. Deuteronomy 2.7, For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness these forty years. The Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. You know, their shoes never wore out. Their clothes never wore out. They didn't die of thirst. They didn't die of hunger because they had manna for forty years. Um, what can I tell you? Deuteronomy 8, 2, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Verse 4, Thy raiment, clothing, thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Now, in the book of Judges, um, the theme of the book of Judges is everybody did, well, after Joshua, well, all right, you've got the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Uh, Moses led everybody out of Egypt, so uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy was basically Moses' leadership. After that, Joshua took over. After Joshua died, well, everybody basically did their own thing. And that's what the book of Judges is. It says, and everybody did that which was right in their own eyes. And um, when the people were wicked, God would send a oppressor of the Canaanite tribes. The people would be oppressed, impoverished. They would cry out to the Lord. The Lord would send a deliverer, deliver them out of the wicked people's hands, people would get fat and happy, forget the Lord, and the cycle would start all over again. God would send an oppressor. Uh, 
Samson. You've heard of Samson. He was one of those judges. Well, if you want to read, you could read Judges chapter 3, verse 11. It says, And the land had rest forty years. Judges 5, 8. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Judges 5.31 So let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. And the land had rest forty years. Now I believe forty years in the Bible is a generation. Judges 8.28 Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more, and the country was in quietness forty years in the days of Gideon. Gideon was another uh, tribe that made, uh, well, Gideon was one of the tribes of Israel. He was a man, and uh, let's see, I think he had a bunch of... Uh, bunch of children. Judges 13, 1. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. Oh yeah, a generation. Now, remember the story of David and Goliath? 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 14. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. Saul was the first king of Israel. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. So Goliath presented himself forty days and challenged Israel. Now the Philistines were the giants. You've heard of Goliath, right? Well, he wasn't the only giant. And everybody was afraid to fight the giant. Forty days. You know, in the book of Jonah, chapter 3 and verse 4, And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Uh, perhaps you remember the book of Jonah? You know, Jonah and the whale. And um, Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. And uh, they were the enemies of Israel. And eventually, I forget how many years it was, but uh, Nineveh eventually conquered the northern kingdom of Israel and took them captive. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, and after that he, through the Holy Ghost, was given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days. Being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Uh, there's a piece of garbage running around called Caesar's Messiah. Uh, it's a, probably a book and a video on YouTube where uh, they claim that Jesus never even existed, that the Romans invented C uh, Caesar, the Romans invented Jesus, to uh, control the Jews and the Christians. Well, the Christians. Uh, really? Really? The Romans invented Jesus. 
okay, and then had the disciples, uh, I guess the whole thing was fabricated, right? So, yeah, no thank you. I don't believe that for a second, but uh, you'll probably see it. Uh, just like the devil, he tell, he'll tell you he doesn't exist either. All right, verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now, remember, God had given them land, and then they rebelled, and the Assyrians took Israel out of the land, and then years later, Babylon took Judah out of the land. So now, they had been conquered by those countries, and then conquered by the Medes and the Persians, who allowed them to rebuild the temple. Then they were conquered by the Greeks. Perhaps you've heard of Alexander, the so-called Great, which uh, led the way for the Greek language to be the common language of that area. I mean, the, um, the city of Alexandria, Egypt, where the greatest library supposedly had ever been uh, in size had been ever been uh, built uh, was named in honor of Alexander. And, you know, when you get conquered, you learn the conqueror's language. The conqueror doesn't learn your language. You learn their language. So, um, and then Rome came and conquered the area. But believe it or not, before that, Parthian, uh, the Parthian Empire had conquered um, the area for a time. But then Rome conquered it. So Rome was a newcomer. But Greek was the common language. And maybe that was why the Lord chose Greek for the New Testament, not Hebrew. All right, so they were asking, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he, Jesus, said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men, angels, right? Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up, from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You saw him go up in a cloud, he's going to come back with the clouds, is basically what they're saying. So, I think uh, that's going to be it for this uh, Bible study. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All glory to Jesus. In His precious name, amen.